I'm Vincent Everts. I'm the trend watcher and the organizer of the Day of the Crypto. And I have the great honor to talk today with Pradeep Guel, and he's the CEO of Solve.care. And one of the interesting ICOs, which basically is starting a coin to change uh, a very difficult and complicated and bureaucratic world. Very much uh, nice to see you in Amsterdam, uh, uh, Pradeep. How has uh, been your stay so far? It's always wonderful. Love Amsterdam. He loves Amsterdam <laughs> and he's always on the road. I just We just met in Washington uh, and you're an existing company yes. with an existing product, with existing sales, with an existing client who wants to do into an ICO. That's a right. field dominated by companies who are young and who are new, who don't have a product, who don't have a business plan, they have just have a white paper, they have a lot of noise and they just basically get that 30 million. How is it for an experienced CEO to be part of this world? Well, you know, it's a learning experience. You have to unlearn a lot of lessons that you've learned in the normal business to be here. Yes. And there's a lot of energy and excitement, as you said, and a lot of great ideas. Some of them you wonder how they will be realized, but many of them could change the world. Well, 98% will fail. And that's true. At least. So 2% will, you know, of the... 10,000 uh, ICOs, which are now people are now starting, um, 98%, maybe 95% will fail. And but it is this, the atmosphere. It's young people. It's people from from Asia, mm -hmm. people from Eastern Europe. I mean, it's just like okay, it's a totally different kind of world than the normal venture capital world, where you sit on a board, you talk to people in suits, they ask you rational questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, how, how difficult is that? You know, it is definitely challenging. I, uh, but it's, in some ways, it's a great contrast. We are, doing a very, we are running a conservative business in a conservative market, and we're trying to be revolutionary in what we do, but not revolutionary in how we do it. Yeah. So there's still room for good governance. There's still room for good practices, compliance, legal, professional behavior. So we bring that, I think, sanity to this place at times. Yeah. But at times you also pick up the energy and the, and the excitement and you realize that there are some really wonderful ideas floating around. And I hope they succeed. I really hope they do. Yeah. Okay, so let's go a little bit into your, uh, into your background. I mean, you have all, everything, where, you know, very, very serious. You've been the CIO of, you started your own, uh, your own imaging company in your, dormant, uh, in your dormant when you were, what age? I was 20. Yeah, and at the end, uh, after 10 years or something like that, how how, how, much, how many people were in the company? Uh, 600. 600, yeah. and you sold it to? WebMD Corp. WebMD Corp, which yeah. I know is from the medical world, is a very interesting company. It is. Which was uh, led by one of the Netscape founders. Uh, right. What is it, Clark or something? Uh, Jim like? Barksdale, yeah. Uh, Jim, yeah, yeah. was uh, totally into sailing ships. And uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and then, then you, went, you became the CIO of? A Blue Cross Blue Shield, yeah. which is a big insurance company. Yeah, yeah. how many uh, patients? Oh, we insured about a million and a half people, I think. Yeah, a million, big, uh, big insurance company. And then, and then you basically dealt with the complexity of, I, of all the ICT uh, product, and you did that. And then, uh, now, you're, you're starting an ICO, right? And uh, what's the whole idea? What, what do you want to do with your company? Well, you know, the, the mission is very clear. We want to use blockchain in a way that it was designed, or it's really meant to be used, which is to delegate authority and delegate trust in healthcare, and I think it eliminates a lot of the personal and professional pain that I have experienced in healthcare. And uh, as an even as a CIO of a big healthcare company, you know we are all human in the end. We all have kids and families, and we all use healthcare one way or the other. And insurance companies are not evil; they want to be efficient. But our processes have evolved to the point of bureaucracy that is more like a policeman than a facilitator. Yeah. So you'd say they're not evil; they're not only after the money, but they still create horrible processes. I think that's true. We have evolved. The whole industry has evolved to, you know, from a defensive position. If you think about insurance, it's all about risk management and defensive. And when you focus on the risk all the time, you stop looking at the upside, really, and you start looking at the dark side all the time. Yeah. So all the processes evolve into to preventing that 1% abuse, and then you end up with 99% being inconvenienced because you're trying to stop the 1%. And there are so many better ways we can do it. And the blockchain is the most exciting one. I mean, the only reason I left my corporate professional environment and get into the blockchain world is because the technology has the promise. Yeah, you Otherwise, said I would. You were good. looking for something like blockchain before it started, right? Yes. Before it is. Okay. We try to do this in a centralized way. Like we built portals, we built mobile apps, we tried to get build health information exchanges. We built all these platforms to integrate data and really nothing worked the way it should yeah. have. Okay, so what's the name of the coin? 
It's called uh, CAN, uh, Care Administration Network Token. Care Administration Network Token. Very yeah, it industry. Sounds, it sounds like you want to do something to our horrible world, because, I mean, <laughs> that in itself. But, I mean, CAN is fine. CAN is a coin. And what is CAN going to be used for in the real world? So it's going to be, that's the platform token that will allow anyone to use our product. So we have a product called Care Wallet. Mm -hmm. There's a patient wallet, there's a provider wallet, there's an admin wallet. And those three wallets give us the power to allow patient, physician, and insurer to talk to each other from an administrative and financial perspective. Yeah, so it's only administrative, nothing to do with medical. It's just no more clinical. like, hey, uh, has there been some care? Does the, does the medical person need to be paid? Is the medical person having a contract with the insurance company? You know, so it's basically programmed money. It's the plumbing of healthcare, right? We're trying to fix the clogged plumbing of yeah. healthcare. And then there is a second coin, which is care coin, which is for payments. And that's our client-issued coin. It has no speculative value. It's not traded on any exchange. It's designed to be smart money to pay providers, to pay ah, payment okay. physicians. So that is really the use of the blockchain. Yes. And, um, and, and to have programmed money, which is intelligently looking, hey, should you be paid because are you medical? Is the patient, did the patient, uh, uh, did the patient get treatment from you? And have exactly. you done, have you got all the documentation done, et cetera? And then you get paid very, very quickly. Very quickly, prompt payment or real-time payment and accurate payment and yeah. transparency of cost without divulging secrets. So simple thing is that we want to a give the patient the authority to go see whichever doctor they want to go see using my dollars. So we're delegating the authority to spend money without losing control over the parameters of spending. Yeah. And if you can yeah. do that and in your wallet... in the money. The, in the, the rules money. are in the money. And that, but there's a separate thing. coin to basically which uh, pays for your services, and that is that you can buy and sell. Correct. That's why would that go in? Why would that go up in value? Why would people think that is a uh, valuable coin, you know, not only to pay for your services, but to something beyond? Well, first and foremost, we want people to buy the coin because they should use the wallet, right? We, we think, and personal experience, you know, about it, uh, we want every parent who has a sick child to have access to care in a better way than today we have. Mm -hmm. We want the insurance companies to buy the, that coin, uh, that uh, token, so that they can facilitate you, the patient, to see doctors as you want, and they want to facilitate the doctor to get paid as they like to. So there is a tremendous amount of administrative savings we are trying to create for an insurance company, for yeah. the doctor, and we're going to free the patient from all the boundaries. And, and it is mu much better than using the dollar because... Well, dollar is dumb, right? When I exchange dollars with you, there is no question asked as to what we did, whether it's worth, whether I owe you the right amount. Yeah. Well, a programmable currency, on the other hand, can ask the right questions. Is, okay. Are you qualified to give me care? Right? That's the question. And if you're not, then you, are, you shouldn't be getting paid. Okay. So the coin can be intelligent enough in asking those questions. Okay, a couple of technical questions. What kind of um, platform are you using? So we're using Ether private permission blockchain. Uh, private, your yes. own blockchain. It's, yeah, it'll be private instances for each insurance coin. But the coin, the, the, the other coin to pay for services is going to be a normal issued coin, I guess. Correct. Yeah, but, but it still runs be. on the same chain. So when a register, when a doctor registers, still the private uh, still. Yep, it can. Now it can move between our instances of the chain. So one coin can go from one chain to the other because they're exactly the same. But the, the care coin, the, the care coin, coin which basically pays doctors. Correct. So yeah. if you have and the five other coin is called can the can coin, and the can coin is on the, on the public Ethereum. Uh, that it will ha it has a link to the public Ethereum, but okay. it really does reside on a private chain. Oh, okay. You still yeah. are going to make your own private blockchain. Why? But why? We, uh, why do you do that? So we are logging in the public chain all the events for the can tokens utilization. So there is a public ledger of how the coin is being utilized. Yeah. But uh, the coin, the can token itself is on a chain-by-chain chain basis. So what we are doing yeah, is... Yeah, I saying, understand right. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what, what phase are you? You know, what, what is the, the, the care wallet? Is it, uh, what is the, 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 the status of the software? Who's going to be the first client? So we already have a first client, uh, a large delivery network in Arizona that is using our, will be using our care wallet in May. Okay. Uh, their plan is to issue it for all their physicians, which is about 5,000 physicians in the state and about 300,000 families that represent about half a million people. Um, and that allows the patient and the provider to do things directly, transact directly, like scheduling, billing, payments, huge savings. And the most exciting part of this client is that they want to actually have a very two-part payment, a fixed fee payment and a variable outcome payment. Okay, an outcome payment. So they want to actually reward the physician yeah. more money for getting me well faster. Okay. 
Very exciting. Where are you now? What phase are you now? Are you already uh, in the in the, the public phase? Are you selling your coin? Yeah, we are doing what's called a pre-sale. Yeah. Uh, and we are seeing enough interest to believe that we will never do a open sale. It looks like we will sell all our coins during yeah, the. Yeah. How uh, much is the pre-sale? Total cap is 35 million. Yeah. And between pre-sale and token sale. Yeah. And at this point in time, we are on track to not do a token sale. I think we'll just sell it all out. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, That's what it exciting. Looks like. It is very exciting. That's exciting. So you don't have to even go to this. You could do everything in the pre-sale. So uh, right. how do people go, uh, participate in the pre-sale? And they go to solve.care and look at the token sale link, and they can follow all the instructions. It's normally very 10 cents. How much is the discount? Normally it's 10. We're selling it for 7 cents in the pre-sale. 30 percent discount. And, uh, and it, that discount will decrease as we collect more revenue, but eventually the discount will go away. But the first 10 million is guaranteed, that discount. Yeah. After that, the discount will start dropping off. Okay. And uh, past 20, 25 million, we'll get rid of the discount. How's been the roadshow? How's yeah. that been? You've been to San Francisco, you've been to Las Miami, yes. at the Bitcoin, uh, and then how was the Bitcoin conference? It was very large, extremely well attended. Yeah. When I spoke in the conference um, hall, I think there were several thousand people and the room was full. Wow. The San Francisco conference was very good. It was very intimate. Networking was great. We had some really thoughtful uh, investors there who asked great questions. For us, it was fantastic. We got a tremendous amount of institutional interest there. Okay. London was very much industry. We got a lot of industry people coming to us and saying, hey, I want to partner with you. We love the idea. How do we apply it in the UK? Oh, really? Uh, and Amsterdam, I think we're just getting started. This has been a great, I love the venue. I like the attendance. You had the room packed earlier today. So uh, we look forward to tomorrow. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, Miami, I, w I wish I was, I, I was there. A couple of thousand people on stage. Then how much traction do you get out of those thousands of people? Uh, we, our community grew very rapidly. We, uh, we have been sort of a well-kept secret. Uh, we have not really done the traditional crypto marketing, buying a bunch of ad banners and promoting ourselves on websites. No. My mission has been to go hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, go to conferences, tell people what we are doing, speak and ask, have them ask questions. Okay. So after the Miami conference, our community doubled literally within two, three days. And, and how much is that big? How, how big is the community now? I think it's around 2,500 people right now. Okay. And it was about 1,000 when we entered Miami. Hey, and you're sold out. Great job. Ready? thank you for coming to Amsterdam. Thank you very Talk much. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Vincent. Okay.